Okay, welcome to another video. So they have just released the latest beta for Fedora Linux 34. So I've been playing around with some of the pre-release ISOs on my laptop and in virtual machines and I've really been quite enjoying it. So now that the beta is out, we're going to install it natively onto the main desktop here and take a little look around. Now I've gone a step further, I've actually cleared my main NVMe drive and we're going to be installing directly on that for today. So it's getting that main drive treatment. So running through the release notes very quickly for this release. Building upon ButterFS, which was introduced as the default file system in Fedora 33, it's now coming with transparent compression. They're replacing Pulse Audio with Pipewire. And of course, the big thing is it's now going to be shipping with GNOME 40. So I recently kind of fell out of love a little bit with GNOME, but I've been playing around with GNOME 40 and I've really been quite enjoying it. So some of the other updates include a better experience in out of memory situations by enabling systemd out of memory by default actions taken by systemd out of memory operate on a per c group level kde now uses the wayland display driver by default and they're also shipping the fedora kde plasma desktop spin on arch 64 architecture for the first time which is very cool so another first for fedora is they've got a new spin and it's the first spin i do believe they've ever done with a tiling window manager and that is going to be the Fedora i3 spin. So you can download the ISO now from the main page on Fedora's website and the ISO is around about 1.92 GB. So what we're going to do now is jump into the installer and get this installed. Okay, so here we are in the live environment. So we're going to jump straight into it and click install to hard drive. And of course the Fedora's installer is very simple and things like user creation and stuff will be sort of reserved for when you first start up and go through the kind of welcome screen and first steps for GNOME. So English, United Kingdom is correct, so let's press continue. So this is unstable pre-release software, do you want to proceed? I do indeed. Okay, so all we really need to do in this part of the installation is choose our installation destination and then we are basically done. So like I said in the intro, we've completely cleared the Sabrent NVMe, so we're going to do the default partition install with that and let that create the partition layout for us, which of course uses ButterFS as its default file system, so we are done. Okay, so as soon as that's finished, the begin installation button will turn blue and we are off to go. So I'll pause the video here and come back once it's finished. Right, so the installation has complete and that took no time at all on my machine, clocking in under five minutes. So what we're going to do now is reboot and check out the beta of Fedora 34. Okay, so here we are, we've booted up post installation for the first time and we've reached the setup screen, which is here is where you're going to create your user account. So welcome to Fedora 34. Setup will guide you through making an account and enabling some features. We'll have you up and running in no time. So let's go ahead and press start setup. So I'm going to disable location services, but I'll leave automatic problem reporting enabled. And next, I'm going to skip adding any online accounts. And here's where we're going to create our user account. So we're just going to type in Tyler and go to the next step, which is your password. I'm going to keep it super simple and done so that's pretty much all you've got to do and then we then have the welcome to gnome 40 kind of guided tour and you are going to want to run through this because there are some new ways of doing things so if we go to take tour and here we go let's start the tour so learn about new and essential features in gnome 34 so let's go ahead and start so get an overview so pretty standard stuff we all know this so we can click the overview button and then get straight into our overview for gnome Next, make apps your own. So arrange the app grid so it makes sense for you. So you can move your apps in any sort of order that you like and create folders and all of that good stuff. Next, keep on top with workspaces. Easily organize windows with the new workspace view. So I know there's been some kind of split opinions on whether the whole horizontal versus virtual workspace kind of thing's better. But I actually like the new way it's handling things with the whole left to right kind of stuff. It kind of just feels a lot more natural to me, especially coming from something like KDE Plasma, for example. So let's go to next. And this is something I've really enjoyed when I've been using this briefly on my laptop is the new touchpad gestures. And they kind of work almost on like a one to one traction. So it's a very smooth as you move your fingers, the animations pretty much keeping you one-to-one -one with the sort of movement of your fingers and it's very nice to use. So using up and down for the overview of three fingers will get you straight into the overview and then keep going and then you'll get into your applications as well. But I'll show you how that all works with touchpads 
when we're going through the gnome 40 next and again some more touchpad gestures so again with three fingers moving left to right you can then switch workspaces as well or virtual desktops and that's it we hope that you enjoy fedora 34 and just in time we've now got some software updates to go ahead and grab and that of course will open up gnome software so it appears we've got a fair bit to get so we're going to go ahead and download those updates we'll pause the video once that's finished and then we'll come back to it okay so we're all up to date and should be good to go now it did the whole restart to install updates but now that that's done we should be good to go and of course you get a nice little notification letting you know that your updates have complete so now that we're all up to date we're going to spend a tiny bit of time just talking about the out of the box look and feel of the desktop however there's not really too much to go over as with fedora you do get quite a close to stock gnome experience so of course you've got a nice little fedora wallpaper with the fedora logo which is an extension that you can disable and then we have our single panel layout of the panel at the top now you won't find loads of flashy extensions installed out of the box for fedora and actually the last time i checked with gnome 40 a lot of the extensions on gnome extensions hadn't actually been updated to use and known 40 just yet so we'll check that out in just a minute as well so at the top right clicking that we can then get to our volume slider connections settings lock screen and then power off and log out then in the middle of our screen we have our date and time and then clicking that will take us straight to our notifications as well as our calendar so we can just press this little clear button to get rid of the update notification and then we're going to enable do not disturb so we don't get any disruptions while we're doing this video and now on top left you of course have your activities button to get you straight into the overview now you will also have the hot corner enabled by default i'm not really personally a huge fan of hot corners i've probably said it numerous times in a lot of videos so i'm probably going to disable that but other than that that's pretty much the out of the box desktop when you're using fedora now before we go over some of the new sort of ways you're going to be using multitasking in the overview we're going to check out how it's partitioned our drives so we're going to open up GNOME Disks, which is of course installed by default. And here we're going to jump straight to the Subrem. And here we are. So we have our EFI partition, which is mounted of course at boot EFI. And then we have our boot partition mounted at boot. And then our main partition, which is using ButterFS as its default file system. So you can snap up, you can set up snapshots and all of that good stuff. Now you might be able to see that there is no partition for a swap and it doesn't use a swap file either. So if you go into files, and then go straight into your computer folder here, you'll notice there is no swap file in your root folder. But if you opened up a terminal, we don't have the keyboard shortcut for terminal, we'll add that in just a moment, and type in lsblk, you'll see that we do indeed have some swap space of 7.9 or 8 GB, but on Fedora we're gonna be using a ZRAM. So with that out of the way, let's start to take a look at some of the multitasking features of GNOME 40. So here we are in our activities overview. Now this is what it's gonna look like when you have no applications open. So you can have your search bar at the top, which of course you can type in anything and hit enter to launch that application. Or if you've got it pinned to your favorites, you can come down here and then open it from your little launcher here. So as we've got nothing open, you're gonna have two virtual workspaces that you can go to and from using the keyboard shortcuts, or you can also use, if you've got a mouse plugged in and you're on a desktop, you can use a scroll wheel. Now I do believe the default keyboard shortcuts for moving to different desktops is super and page up or down. But for me that doesn't feel super natural so I'm probably gonna change my now to use control left and control right. So we're gonna go straight into keyboard and then we're gonna to go to customize shortcuts. And then while we're here, we're also gonna add the shortcut for GNOME terminal. So we're gonna go into navigation and here you can see that the default shortcuts for moving to different workspaces has got super page up which doesn't feel super natural to me when you're going in like a left to right sort of movement as opposed to an up or down so i'm just going to go for control left and that's pretty much what i use regardless of what desktop i'm on so it's nice and easy for me to transfer from one and get straight to gnome 40 and the fact it's going left and right now makes that transition even easier so we're going to do the same for right and now the only other thing we are going to change is moving our windows to different workspaces control alt left for the left one and then we'll do control alt right for the right one so now that we've done that we can get back into looking at the multitasking features of gnome 40 but just before we do that and to save us sort of time while we're looking through we're going to add the shortcut for the gnome terminal 
So we're just going to type in GNOME Terminal, and then we're going to copy and paste that into the command, and then set it for Control, Alt, and T. There we go. So we should now just be able to open up our terminal using the common shortcut of Control, Alt, and T. So what we're going to do now is go back into our overview and now that we've got an application open you can also see how moving them across different workspaces is going to work. So now that's on the other workspace so we've just gone to that and you might have noticed that the little view of the desktops has now disappeared because we're using dynamic and virtual desktops. So as sort of more things are populating each virtual desktop it's going to sort of expand or decrease the amount of virtual workspaces you have. So if we used to open up an application like files now and then go back into it and then move files to this page here. Again, we've now got three virtual workspaces. So of course, like I said, we can scroll through them using the scroll wheel or we can use the keyboard shortcut, which I've just changed to control left and control right. Now, when you're on a desktop, you can of course use the same control left and control right. And as you can see, the little dialog is now also showing you the motion in like a left to right kind of thing as opposed to the up and down which again just feels a lot more natural to me on a desktop anyway now we've got a couple of windows open so this is what it's going to look like when you've got the one application occupying one virtual desktop but if you just open up another application it's then going to spread it out like that and you might notice every now and then when you've got two open one of the windows kind of overlaps the actual workspace and then of course moving your mouse in between is going to kind of focus that application and you can of course also use left and right. Now if you've got free it's going to sort of cluster it a bit nicer so you ain't going to have any of that overlapping and if we open up one more application which is GNOME software you could then see it's got nice sort of spacing and you can still see everything that's going on with your application windows. And let's just test it out with Firefox on this one by typing in fire and hitting enter to launch the Firefox web browser. And there we go. Now there's one more view, which is the show applications view. So clicking that is then going to move everything up. So you've got three spaces now for your workspaces. And then we have all of our applications here and we have our little sort of dock or favorites thing at the bottom. Now we still have the options to be able to move things across different workspaces like so. And as you can see, it's now expanding the amount of desktops or virtual desktops that we are indeed using. Now all of these sort of nice animations to move across is even nicer in my opinion when you're using a laptop with your touchpad. So as you can see here, it's very nice and smooth and it pretty much does follow the sort of speed and motion that your actual hand is going when it's going through the different animations. So you can use the whole scrolling down with three fingers to open up the overview. And you can also do the three finger left and right swiping then get to get to your different virtual desktops. But with that out of the way, let's start to take a look at some of the applications. So application wise, you won't find a whole lot. I think Fedora does quite a nice job of just basically shipping everything a new user might need to get them up and running and then not adding a whole load of bloat and it gives you a nice kind of minimal selection to build upon with the applications you actually want to use. And of course we can move all of these around in any position we would like, create folders and all of that good stuff. So out of the box we have cheese for webcam, we have clocks, contacts, we then have LibreOffice Calc, LibreOffice Impress and LibreOffice Writer. And it should be a nice new version of 7.0. something. So if we go into help Annabelle, we can see that we're using a LibreOffice version 7.1.1.2 with the locale of ENGB. And we do have dictionary support working out of the box. So we don't need to go ahead and mess around with installing different dictionaries for LibreOffice. Now let's get back into our applications. We then have no maps, we have settings, we have text editor, which is going to be using get it. We then have the tour that we went through at the beginning of the video. And now we have known weather boxes for virtual uh, virtual machines. It's quite a useful little application actually. Videos, photos, and then rhythm box for music. Now in utilities, we of course have known disk, system monitor, and all of the sort of usual suspects that you'll find in most GNOME desktops for the utilities folder. Now what we are going to do is open up GNOME software because we're going to add some additional repos. Let's bring that to a different desktop. So as you can see we've got the enable third party repositories which we're going to go ahead and do. And we're also going to go onto the flathub.org website to get the flathub repo to add that to our repos as well. So what we're going to do is open up Firefox and then go to flathub.org and then go to the quick setup for uh, Fedora. So we're just going to go straight to quick setup. 
So Flatpak will of course already be installed on Fedora. So all we've got to go ahead and do is add this repository and we will be doing that in the terminal. So we're just going to right click copy. And as we've added our keyboard shortcut for the terminal, we can get straight to it nice and easily with control alt T. So it will ask you for your password. And now that's done, what we're going to do is just close all this off and see what other repositories we're going to use. I'm also going to install Steam and we'll test out a round or two on CSGO as well. So we're going to go to software repositories, give it a few seconds just to load what we've got. And there we are with the third party. You can, of course, also add Google Chrome and all of that, as well as the NVIDIA driver. But all we're going to go ahead and do is add the non-free for Steam. So we're going to enable that. It's going to ask you for your password. And now that is enabled. So let's just see if there's anything else on here that we might want to go ahead and grab. And there is FlatHub that we just enabled ourselves. Now, before we install any applications, like heavy applications, we are going to do a reboot and check how much RAM you're using with HTOP before we make any additional changes to our system. Okay, so we've just booted up, and as you can see, RAM is looking pretty decent for GNOME, to be fair, that we're rocking around about 760 MB on a fresh boot, which again, isn't crazy minimal, but for GNOME, that's looking pretty good to me, and I'm pretty happy with that RAM usage from a fresh boot. And there is, of course, our little swap there using a ZRAM. So what we're going to do now that we've enabled some of the repositories that we want to use, like Steam and FlatHub, we're going to go ahead and install some applications. So one of them is going to be Steam, of course. And then we're also going to get things like GNOME tweaks so we can check out the theming. So we're using Adwata by default. And we'll also go ahead and install the extensions because we can't change the extensions anymore in GNOME tweaks. And then we'll also have a look at any of the extensions that are actually available now, as well as seeing how theming is working. Because last time I checked, a few of the sort of wi window themes that I were working with weren't really sort of ready to use GNOME 40. So we'll see if that's still the case with my favorite theme, of course, which is Arc Theme. So we're going to grab Arc Theme. We're also going to grab the Mocha Icon Theme. And we're going to grab Steam. And we're going to grab GNOME Tweaks. And I think that'll be it for now. And we're also going to grab some flat pack applications for GIMP and Caden Live. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and grab these packages. I'll pause the video here and come back once all of these applications have been installed. Okay, so all of our applications, at least for now, have been installed. As you can see, we've got Steam, we've got the extensions, and we also have the flat pack version of Caden Live, plus a few other little things. So what I'm going to do is close this one for now, and we're also just going to dismiss the login screen for Steam. We will log into that in just a moment and make sure gaming is working with a little game of CSGO towards the end. So what I want to do is jump into the GNOME extensions website now and see if there are any more up-to-date extensions that we can use for GNOME 40. Bearing in mind, we're still kind of early days, and this is the beta of Fedora 34. And as GNOME sort of progresses more and sort of the extensions are more up-to-date, there'll be a lot more to use. Before we do that, though, I did mention I'm not a huge fan of hot corners on GNOME. So what we're going to do is add this command here of G settings, followed by false and that's going to disable the hot corner for us. So now that we've done that, we should now be hot corner free, and that's just how I like my desktops. So what we're going to do now is close this and jump onto Firefox, and we will have to add the um, browser extension. However, the connector, so Chrome GNOME Shell, will be pre-installed as far as I remember when you're using Fedora. Let's go to continue installation and add. I'm just going to refresh the page, and we should be all good. There we go. So it looks like a lot of it has now been updated from the last time I checked. So we've got over three pages. Nope, just three by the looks of things. So if we go to the last page, yeah, so we've got three pages worth. So let's have a look at what is currently, and as you can see here, you can filter it by com compatible with current version. So we've got user themes here. So let's go ahead and quickly just enable user themes because we will see if some of the shell themes for GNOME, are, GNOME 40 are ready, like Arc. It wasn't the last time I used the shell theme, however, the window theme worked absolutely fine. So there we go, that's the user themes extension. And let's see if there's anything else in here that I want to grab. I do want caffeine, but I don't know if that's going to be ready yet. So it's not there on the first page. Let's go to the second page. So we've got Alt Tab Mod, we have X11 Gestures, we have Snap Manager, Extensions and Tweaks and System Menu, we have Tining Assistant, Baba. I don't think we're going to be lucky enough to have caffeine just yet. So we've got hide panel, places, no. So at the moment we've got that. However, the last time I checked it, there was about four or five. So they have 
all been sort of working away and getting things up to date and ready to use on GNOME 40. I just want to quickly check one thing, which is going to be dash to dock. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be out of luck here. So if we just change it to all versions, it will let you know that it's not currently compatible with this version of GNOME. As you can see there, it's incompatible. But with that out of the way, let's jump straight into the tweaks package or the tweaks program application. And as you can see here, extensions has moved to GNOME extensions. But we've already gone ahead and installed that and they do actually recommend using the flat hub version i think i've just gone ahead and grabbed the um, native application for it instead so first of all we're going to go into our windows title bars and just add maximize and minimize because i'm kind of really depend on them as much as i like the sort of keyboard shortcuts so like super and h for example i do still quite like having the um, buttons there as well right so we're going to go straight to appearance of course we are using add water as the default theme but now that we've installed Arc Dark, you can see that the Arc Dark theme looks absolutely lovely in just the sort of windows. We haven't changed the shell theme just yet, so let's open up our file manager. And there we go, those icons are a little bit large for me, so let's just bring that down one step. And there we go, and while we're here, we're also gonna change the icon theme. So we're gonna change that to Mocha, which is quite similar to Arc Icons. I will also download Arc Icons, because I prefer it, but I knew that Mocha was in the sort of the, uh, the repo. So what we're going to do now is open up the extensions and enable user themes if it isn't already enabled. It is indeed, I can see it's there already in shell. So what we're going to do is change our shell now to arc dark. However, I'm not too sure it's going to be ready to look quite as normal as you'd expect. So our top bar's changed quite a nice. Let's have a look at everything else. No. As I said, um, it's going to take a, you know, a little bit of time before these themes are sort of all nice and up to date, ready to use GNOME 40 by the looks of things, but there we go. So it's not looking quite right at the moment. We've got a weird little line border here and the dock looks a bit strange. So for now, I am just gonna leave the shell theme on the default and I'm not too worried about that. It looks still quite nice with the dark sort of panel with the arc theme anyway. So we're gonna leave that like that. Now, if we just quickly jump into the extensions package, I do believe we tried to click it but it doesn't seem to want to be opening so let's give that another go so for some reason extensions just doesn't want to open so i've uninstalled that version and what we're going to do is go onto the flat hub version install that and we should have a bit more luck with that and we can see what extensions are currently running okay so we are back we've gone ahead and installed the version from flat hub and we have no issues opening it so we can see what actual extensions we have got at the moment so manually installed we have user themes which is working absolutely fine and then built in we have the applications menu and the background logo which is the little fedora logo right about there which we will disable and then we have launch new instance place uh, places status indicator and then the window list but there we go so what we're going to do now is just quickly check out some of the wallpapers and then we're going to go ahead and try a few games of Counter-Strike Go and just see how we go. And then I'm also going to set up things like my Samba shares, etc. So let's just right click onto the desktop and go to display, uh, change background. Okay, so we've got the ones with the little clock there and then we have the actual versions of it as well. So the light and darker ones. And then we've got all of the other sort of old school wallpapers that you've all probably seen before. So what I'm going to do now is pause the video, install onto my, uh, load up my Steam account and add the external drive that we use for the games and stuff and we'll see how we go. Okay, so we've just jumped into any old random casual game of CSGO and frame rates are looking pretty decent from what I would expect on this hardware, looking from 200 up to 300 FPS. Now we're just going to go and get ourselves killed, we're not too worried about sort of staying alive and then we're going to jump straight into the desktop and then finish up looking at Fedora 34 and then wrap it up with some final thoughts. Okay, so we're back at the desktop. So installing Steam was absolutely fine on Fedora's 34 beta. Now while I was installing Steam and adding my game library, I also set up my Samba shares and added them to my FS tab file. So if we go into files, which was of course Nautilus, as you can see in that little bookmark there, we have our share, which is mounted in MNT share, and that's all working out of the box. Now one more thing I wanna check before we wrap it up with some final thoughts. It's just media playback, it shouldn't have any issues at all. I can't remember if Fedora has everything that it needs to sort of mount XFAT file systems out of the box, but we'll check that out now. I'm pretty sure it does. On some distros, even still, you have to add Fuse XFAT for it to actually mount the drive, but it's found it, so we have SSD right about there. 
and then as we can see it has mounted it without any problems whatsoever so i'm just going to mute and we're just going to double click on the video and make sure it's all playing without any issues of playback there and of course it is going to open up in videos or known videos or totem i do believe it's called but there we go so so far so good and for a beta everything is very nice and snappy and i'm very very close to deciding whether i'm going to use gnome 40 as a daily driver moving forward right so before we wrap things up with some final thoughts as we can see here the kernel version we are now using is linux fedora 5.11.8-300 and in the about information in gnome you can see that we are using fedora 33 the workstation edition pre-release and we are using GNOME version 40 with the windowing system, of course, defaulting to Wayland. Now, when you're in the live environment and you're installing it, you will notice it still says beta for GNOME version. But once you're installed and done some updates, it will then change it to GNOME version 40. So that wraps up my first look of Fedora 34, the beta. Now, if you want to go ahead and try this yourself, I definitely recommend it. So although it is a beta, it is code complete and bears a very strong resemblance to the final release. And I've actually had no issues with it at all. So before this video, I was also messing around with some of the pre-release ISOs. And again, none of them gave me issues either. And I do believe one of them is still installed on my laptop, which I'm going to have to go ahead and I'll probably reformat it and install a new version of 34. And then perhaps leave it on the desktop as well and just see how I feel. I'm very tempted to use Fedora for a while, but we'll see how that goes. Now, of course, come final release, we'll be checking out a lot of these other versions as well. So they're spins and I'll definitely be checking out KDE Plasma, but they also offer versions of XFCE, LXDE, LXQT, Mate Compiz, Cinnamon and then the um, SOAS, like the little kiosk stuff. And then we have the brand new i3 tiling window manager, which will have its own video too when everything's got its final release. But you can test all of these spins now on the beta or 34 on the Fedora website. That's been my first look at Fedora 34 with GNOME 40. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And if you really enjoyed it, you can subscribe to the Patreon at patreon.com slash Now, And of course, you can join the Discord, which is linked in the description. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.